And Dan is going to be doing some exciting things from his experience working on the chain gang. Right, right Dan? So I've been doing a lot of experiments with chains. What's neat about it is you can get away from the massless strings and cords mm -hmm. and use something that has a significant amount of mass and see how that and changes some fun the stuff experiment. With it. Yep. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'll let you go. Well, this first one here is dealing with a chain uh, that we are going to drop. And what I want to know is the force on the table from the chain as it falls. And to be able to measure that instead of on the table, we'll have it land on this force sensor. And so what you want to do is be real careful, have it nice and steady. And to make it simpler, we will assume the chain is just about to hit the force sensor. And so it's not going to fall through a certain amount of height before it hits. And it's still a complex problem, though. So as it's hitting, there's sort of two components to the force here to think about. There's the weight of the chain that's resting on it. And then as it falls, the chain is coming to a stop. So the force sensor has to apply an extra force to stop the chain. It's equal to the rate in, of change, the momentum. And so that's kind of a complex problem. Dan, let's uh, unplug the HDMI and plug it back in. Let's give that, that always works, right? Maybe. <laughs> it's a little Maybe. Kind of lost the whole display. There we go. That'll be coming up soon. I think it's like cycling through three different modes there. Well, I'll, let's see if that fixes itself. We'll just deal with it. So. What you can do is solve this with calculus. Yeah, it is. I think it's my connector. I have a. I've got one. Okay, I, I had a backup one there too. I thought we did test this, but like we had five <laughs> but seconds of test. Anytime you live with anything, it's going to change a little. Let's see if uh, we're going to switch out the dongle here and see if we can't get the computer to show what we're seeing here on Dan's computer and we'll see if we can't get that up on the screen. While Dan's hooking that up, it's very interesting just to kind of show the, the sensors that Dan's using. Uh, if you can't see those directly, we're using our standard force sensor, which is neat, but then Dan has this neat little thing on top, which is actually a force sensor balance stand and it's screwed right into the top of the force sensor so it turns the force sensor into a device now that is actually able to measure as a balance would um, and a really nice little device these are orderable yes JJ yes. You have to, this isn't this isn't a 3d print thing this That's is you right. can actually purchase that uh, is that part of a kit or is that a standalone it's all, by itself. all by itself so turn your simple force sensors into a simple balance stand that you can do some of these activities with um, just by using this device. Uh, we've tried a different dongle now. Let's see if we're able to see the screen, uh, if it's coming up, sort of. And so here's a solution to this using calculus. And in this case, we're solving for the rate of change of momentum uh, using an infinitesimal amount DT. You have extended screen. Yeah, switch it to your other desktop. Let's see, that made it work. <laughs> There we go. I just needed to walk in there. So I'm not going to walk through all that. Actually, I do in a YouTube video, which I have the URL up there, and we might get that into the chat to make it a little bit easier. But you may want to do this even with students that uh, don't use calculus. And so what you can do is just take a finite amount of time 
and figure out the change in momentum for how much chain falls in that time and add it up. And I'll show you how to do that with our Blockly programming. Now, another thing to make this easier, so uh, JP talked about this um, different attachment I put onto the force sensor to make it sort of a pan balance. You can also print these out in, uh, with a 3D printer on Thingiverse, we have that. And you could just go to the hardware store and get some bolts and a piece of metal or something and, and make your own. I use these in my class. To help catch the chain, I'll put a cup on there. So we would zero the force sensor so that we're just measuring the force. And then I just have to hold this chain. It's a one meter chain. We know the mass. Wait. What? JJ, I'm in the middle of this demo. That's not a chain, Dan. This is a chain. <sighs> okay, we'll do it your way. But force sensor wouldn't work. So I guess we need our force platform. And we got a bucket. It's almost like I knew he was going to do that. And so we will measure uh, using this chain. And so let's see what that looks like. Now, if we go back to all that calculus stuff, which is kind of, there's a lot on that slide. But at the very end, the final conclusion is the force will reach three times the weight of the chain right as it's about to uh, complete its fall. And that's because at the end, we have almost all the weight of the chain on, and it's falling at a faster rate, so a bigger chunk of mass is going faster and needs to be stopped at the end. So that's what we'll look for here in our measurement, is does the final force equal about three times... Oh, better plug this in. Three times the weight of the chain which will be the final force that we measure. There we go. Let's see if it's reading zero. It's reading zero. We've got six feet of chain, which I think is 1.83 meters. And it's just touching. And it stopped measuring for some reason. Well, I know why. That again, that'd be faster. They put in the Blockly code. Got it. Sort of. So the maximum force here was about 45 Newtons. And if I measure the weight of the chain now, it's about 16 Newtons. And so that's about 3 times 16, 48 Newtons, so pretty close. Now, I mentioned doing this without calculus. So here's the Blockly code that would accomplish that. We were just solving for how much weight has already fallen onto the force platform, what the force is to stop a little piece of chain coming in that uh, amount of time. And then we add those two together. And then we increment, hey, how fast is the chain falling now? How far is it falling? And we keep doing that. And we output our predict uh, prediction for the force. And so now this is output from the code. And this is really neat, Dan. What, what you're doing is you're using the Blockly coding that's built into the software. This is built into it. And you've now made a model, a right. predictive model using the code, and then we could actually go back and now test that predictive model with the real I, thing. Ideally, you do the prediction first, mm -hmm. but just for this presentation, I thought we'd go the other way. And you can see that the maximum force here is about 47 Newtons. And so this is predicting, and, and that's predicting the same exactly thing the calculus did. So, right. so that simple code replaced all that stuff. And so you might say, hey, what if I have kids with calculus? I think they understand the calculus better if they also see this sort of finite time step approach and they get more of an understanding of what it means to take an infinitesimal uh, amount of time. 
And so the, again, the, a complete write-up of this, even links to a, a sample lesson and a lab for dropping the little chain, sorry JJ, uh, <laughs> because you probably have access to more force sensors, is at that YouTube link and uh, you can find out more there and always feel free to contact me. And the nice thing is, Dan, you, you could have done the, the little chain or the big chain both with the, the predictive right. uh, model and come up with the same conclusion. And I think we have more about chains. I just need a minute to go grab a little bit more stuff here okay. so you can entertain it's the sure, folks. Sure, yeah, I'm all here for the entertainment. <laughs> Thanks, Dan, and so I'll just, I'll just fill some time, ladies and gentlemen. Dan Burns. Do we have any good shout-outs coming in, Janet, from anybody great from our international crew out there? Oh, they are all great. That's right. We've got some new folks coming in, more folks coming in from Taiwan, I see. Uh, really, so great to have you with us. Who else, Janet? Glenn says hello. He is um, the one representing... Ah, so it's Glenn from Norway. That's so nice to have you with us, Glenn. Awesome. And, uh, and we've got a lot of our domestic folks coming in, too. I see we've got some folks joining us from uh, different states around the United States. It's nice to have you here. And for all of you, if you've been watching the news, you probably know that California is on fire. It seems to be what we do every year, uh, and we're doing it really well this year. And so everybody is safe here. The, the fires are um, actually not that far away, uh, and, uh, and it's actually a very scary year. Uh, with fires and there's a tremendous amount of smoke in the air but we're safe here uh, everybody is safe at Pasco and we're all doing well but we are watching the fires very closely and we really appreciate you reaching out and saying hello and your, all of your concerns but we're safe and thank you for asking uh, Dan we grabbed some more stuff what are you what are you ready to show us now what I do with my chain the little one yeah, is right here well that was yeah of course it fell on the floor it's on the floor right uh, so now we're going to look at a Atwood machine problem And to make it a little simpler, we're going to not have masses on the string, or in this case, the chain. But again, we have a chain, so it's not a massless string. And what we're going to do is put it on our rotary wireless rotary motion sensor. And we can measure the linear, well, we could also measure the angular quantities. But we're going to measure the linear speed of the chain as it falls and its uh, linear position. And to predict this, again, you could use calculus. Here's a slide going through it. I'd say this is a little more complicated. This one is also allowing for, um, let's see, no, this one I did simplify. It's just chain. And so a lot of stuff there, your calculus students should be able to handle this. But again, the final solution is pretty neat. We find that the speed of the chain is directly proportional to its displacement x. And the slope of that would be the square root of 2g over l. So the mass of the chain doesn't matter. Now, you might be wondering, hey, could we also predict this using that um, approach with Blockly, and the answer is yes. So we also have a Blockly code, where as this thing rotates, we just keep solving for how much mass was added on this side, which is um, pulling this way, and then how much mass was lost here, same amount, right? And then we calculate the new net force on the system. So as the chain goes, the new net force keeps increasing. And instead of solving that in closed form like we would with calculus, we can just numerically solve for it and make our prediction as well. But first, let's measure it and see what that looks like. See if it is linear as we predicted. Now, it matters how much is on one side versus another at the start. And so in this case, we're assuming it's balanced with just a tiny, tiny bit on this side, um, or let's see, the other side. We want it to go positive measured with this as counterclockwise from your perspective. So I'll hit start or record. And just give it a little bit to the other side. And we got our graph. And you can see it was linear. Here, something interesting happens. 
Uh, I've watched it in slow-mo. The chain starts to come off the pulley because there's not enough force to hold it there uh, where you don't have enough uh, force toward the center from the weight of the chain to make it spin in a circle. So that's a whole other program we'll, we'll do later. But it's certainly linear here. And if we measure the uh, slope of that using capstone, we get 4.11. So how does that compare to the theoretical? I think I put it in here. Uh, when I did this earlier, I got 4.16. Theoretical for a one meter long chain is 4.43 seconds. Or, uh, one over seconds would be the units of the slope. Now let's see what the Blockley did. Well, let's watch it. Uh, I'll redo it again. And so the Blockley is generating the velocity versus position data from our program. And we're getting the slope. It starts out a little non-linear, but definitely linear for the bulk of that. And the slope predicted by Blockley is 4.46, whereas calculation, uh, calculus is predicting 4.43. I could change the time step, and it would get a little bit better. So you can have students model a complex system with Blockley without knowing uh, calculus. You can have calculus students do the model, and then they understand it better. I think they understand what uh, they're doing with their sure, calculus with, with, better. Sure, with the calculus put in there. And the neat thing about what you did with the modeling, Dan, is that uh, you, you use Blockly, uh, which tends to be a, um, a lot of people refer to it as a simple form of coding, but it's not really simple when you can see some of the more complicated right. things that you're able to model. All the same ideas and concepts in any kind of code are, are all there, and the visual nature of it makes it uh, kind of a low bar for students who are unfamiliar with coding, in my view. Right, and so you could you could probably spend a lot of time doing the same thing as something yeah. like Python, but get hung up on syntax. Here we're able to assemble a very nice program that models very nicely, does a very good predictive model, uh, and we don't have to get hung up so much on the programming, we can focus more on the physics. Yeah. And if you want to try this in your class, I have a, another video that goes over a lot of details and links to materials and slides and a, a sample lab handout uh, this URL, and I'm sure Janet is getting that in the chat, so you can just copy and paste, give it a look, and then if you have questions or want to tell me how it went, uh, dburns at pasco.com. dburns at pasco.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dan Burns.